Hey, what's up everybody? Haskins here with another awesome build tutorial. And yes, I'm a man of my word. You asked for it, now you're going to get it. I had so many people in the comments and so many people like the video of me showcasing this, but now you're gonna get every single step of the way and exactly how to make this fully functional as well. Some folks were doubting whether this thing could drive, can it climb hills? I'm gonna cover that in this video as well, so stick around so you don't miss that. Also, the chapters are in the description, so if you want to save your point and come back later, you're gonna be able to click on exactly what those are. I do that in all of my videos for you all so you can enjoy this content at your own pace. Also, if you want me to continue putting out content like this, my Epic Creator Code is now live. So when you're purchasing things in the store, make sure you use Creator Code Haskins. This really helps my channel and helps me put out this content for all of you. All right, so that's enough of me yapping. Let's get into the build. All right, so to get this build started, we're gonna go on into our building parts over to toys under vehicle parts. And we're gonna drop down a large car jack that, that's gonna take four wooden rods. So find a good large open area to start building this because this thing's huge. And then we're gonna grab this vehicle base 12, which is the 20 by 20 by two. And then we're just gonna simply place this thing up on top of the car jack, just like I'm showing you right here. Now, once we have one of those down, we're gonna snap two more into place. And this is going to be the actual storage area base. Now, once we've got those in, we're gonna move back over to our floor pieces and I'm gonna grab any eight by two by one floor piece. And we're just gonna snap this thing on underneath here, line it up with the center. And we're gonna nudge it back at least five spaces, then snap into place. And now this is where we're gonna go back to the same exact um, foundation base that we've used. This is the 20 by 20 by two. And we're gonna nudge it over three spaces to create a small gap and separation between the cabin space and the cargo space. Now we'll go back into our vehicle parts and grab this base number nine. This is the eight by eight by two block. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these evenly placed up on the front here. Now you can use the yellow line on the previous foundation piece we put down to center these up. And then next we're gonna use the vehicle base number seven and we're gonna place these lined up with both the right and left side outer edge of the ones we just placed. And then we can get this vehicle base four and place this right in the middle of those two pieces. Now we're gonna build out our suspension wheels and fenders. And what we're gonna do is grab the suspension five. Now this is the largest one and it's gonna be required to make this thing look good. So we're gonna grab that. Now for this part, you're gonna to wanna to line it up off to the side and nudge it back five spaces. And now we're gonna move over and center this thing up. I had to do that because that floor piece was in the way. So just make sure again, you are five spaces back from the front edge of this foundation. And then to get the next one, we're gonna line it up until it's green. And then we're gonna nudge back six spaces in total. And then just go ahead and place that down. Head back to your menu where we're gonna grab these large powered wheels. This is one frost pine and four frost pine a piece. So make sure you have those in your inventory. And we're just gonna snap these in just like you're seeing right now. And then next grab a large fender where we're gonna line it up at the outer edge and nudge it in one space. And then we're gonna actually snap this one down and take another and nudge it back till it turns green and it's connected just like this. You should have your wheels peeking out just slightly like that. Now make our way to the other side and we're gonna follow the exact same steps. So for the rear suspension, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Again, line it up, nudge it inward five spaces, snap that puppy down, and then we're gonna line it up till it's green and then move over six and just repeat the steps we did with the front set of wheels on the rear of this truck. Now we'll move around to the front where we're gonna grab the same suspension number five piece. We're gonna line it up in the center, but this time we're gonna nudge back three spaces. Now you can check, you want this piece to be lined up directly with where these two separate pieces up front meet. You can see the line up the middle there. Make sure it looks like that. And then also we're gonna grab turnable wheels for the front instead of the power wheels. So snap those on the right and left side of the suspension piece. And then next we're gonna grab the medium fender piece. And rather than how we snap these in before, you're gonna see here in just a moment, 
we're gonna get this underneath the foundation piece and we're gonna nudge it out one space before we nudged it in this time we're nudging it out and then we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna line up another piece and snap a second one in then all you need to do from here is repeat the same thing on the other side of this wheel and then put these fenders in the exact same positions on the opposite side of the suspension over the other turnable wheel. Now we're gonna put down some stairs here so we can hop up on our vehicle base and start building out the rear cargo area. Now I wanna mention I am using the Beachy Boulevard set to get this blue color. However, don't worry if you don't have that set, you can use any walls with the same dimensions that are a part of the free to play sets. The only difference here is your vehicle won't be blue. You can have a different color. There is these gray colored walls. You have some brick colored walls as well as a yellow one from one of the other sets that are already in the game. So we're gonna grab a two by 16 by 12 wall and then we're just gonna nudge it into where that little gray line on the outer edge is exposed. And then we're gonna snap in walls until we reach like the farther side, you can't fit another one of these. So we're gonna actually grab a two by eight by 12 and then we're gonna snap that in right on the edge of this one here and then repeat the same pattern on the other side. Now move back to the 2 by 16 by 12 wall and we're going to fit this right in the middle here. Now don't have it connecting, we're going to leave those corners open so we can drop down here now from the bottom side and you can see right there we've got that little corner piece missing. So we're going to grab any one of the corners, in this case we're using the beachy corner and we're just going to snap those in on the right and left sides of these walls. I'm going to put down another set of stairs here and make our way up top. We're going to build the roof part. Now this part is particularly easy. Just follow along the steps because you might get hung up with some of the pieces towards the end. And we're going to go into our floor pieces here where we're going to look for any one of the wide floor twos. Now the dimensions of these pieces are going to be 16 by 16 by 1. So we're gonna grab this piece here, I'm using the beachy wide floors, and we're gonna get this snapped in right here on the outer edge. Now don't cover the wall, you want it on the inside there. And we're gonna snap three of those across, and then we're gonna move over to any one of the pieces of our choice that are the eight by eight by ones, and we're gonna snap two of those in on the edge. Now the reason for this is because if you added another one, it'd be hanging over, nobody likes a hangover. So we're good to go there. Now we can make our way over to the thin floor pieces. And what we're gonna start with is the longer piece. So this is gonna be the 16 by two by one. And we're gonna start to outline this thing to cover up those ugly edges here. And we're gonna place them down until once we get to this point and the third one, we don't want those to hang over. So we're gonna end up moving back to a smaller piece to finish this off. We're gonna be using the eight by two by one. And then a 12 by two by one and another eight by two by one to finish off the roof pieces. Now we've got this thing looking pretty good so far. It could have probably done this earlier, but now feel free to remove your lift and drop this thing down so we can start finishing off this awesome semi truck. In my opinion, this is where this build starts to really come alive. So we're gonna start by going to our roof pieces now. You do have to have the Shogun stuff unlocked. We're gonna use this Kawara Roof 6, which is crazy, this is only two wood, but we're gonna line it up in the center and make sure that the front little block underneath there is lined up with the front edge of your foundation piece. Now we're gonna move over to our half wall section. Any two by two by six piece is gonna work here. We're gonna fill out this engine bay looking piece by placing these on the inside. Now I chose a specific pattern here because from the outside it looks really cool. So if you are using these Beachy Boulevard walls, I definitely recommend following the pattern that I'm showing you right here. Next to finish off the front end, we're gonna use a two by 16 by six half wall. We're gonna line it up with the outer edge of that front foundation piece. 
just like this and then just nudge it over one space and repeat that on the opposite side now let's dress up the front end and create our grill. We're gonna start with a 16 by two by one. Now there's a ton of different floor pieces that are free, but we're gonna use the beachy one just to keep the color consistency here. We're gonna line it up right on the bottom edge of the front of that foundation piece like you're seeing there. And we're gonna move over to fencing where I'm gonna be using these beachy railing corners. Now in terms of the free stuff, there is a very limited number of pieces for railings. You can use this medieval one or even the palatial corners, but we're gonna be using beachy railing corner here. And we're going to attach these right under the foundation on the edge there. Don't have it on the floor piece. And we're going to take another one and just nudge it all the way over in the exact same spot on the other side. And then once you have those in, we're going to go over to our car pieces and we're going to place some headlights down. Now I'm using the flat light bar. We're just going to tuck these right underneath here on the outer edge of the right and left side of the floor piece. Just make sure that it's not hanging over. You want this to fit right nice and flush underneath that rail piece like you're seeing. Now move back to your railing corners and we're gonna snap one right up against the light piece that we just put in there now. Be careful with the placement. We want it on the outer edge. As you can see there, I had to break one of these off. So a good way to do this is snap into one that you already have down and just nudge it over until you touch the light. Next, I'm using a one by six by three railing. This is the beachy one. There are some equivalents in the free stuff. So check those out if you don't have this set. And then I'm gonna take a one by four by two to fill this whole entire front end out. Now we're gonna beef this up a bit and add some additional strength to the front end. So we're gonna take another 16 by two by one thin floor piece. We're gonna snap this right underneath like this. Now once it turns green, place that thing down. And now we're gonna add a little bit more bulk to the front of this thing by adding some more railings. Here we'll make our way back to the fencing pieces where we're gonna grab the same railing corners we just used. And then I'm gonna snap these into place right on the inside of those lights, just like this. And now we'll move back over to the railing pieces and we're gonna fit in the same combination, which is gonna be the railing three and the railing two to really have this thing a lot more beefy looking. All right, the front end is looking good. Time to build out our cabin space. We're gonna go into our walls again and we're gonna grab a two by eight by 12 and we're gonna line it up at the outer edge of the foundation piece there and we're gonna nudge it over two spaces. So we're gonna place one down just like this. Now, the one thing I wanna point out, if you plan on actually testing and driving this thing around, skip over putting this door on however if you're planning to use this just for a set piece and storage you can put this door on here if you'd like it doesn't actually function though because for whatever reason when you place these on those like uh, structured foundation pieces the, the door doesn't operate so feel free to leave that off but next we'll grab a corner and we're just going to drop it in to finish that part off and then we're going to go to the other side where we're gonna use the same combination of pieces. So we'll use again a two by eight by 12, and we're gonna nudge it over after we line it up with the edge, two spaces, and then we can just place another one down and attach it right there, and then finish this piece off with another corner. Now we'll make our way in the inside of this thing here, and we're gonna to wanna to close off the back end of this. And where we're gonna do that is gonna go back to our walls and we're gonna grab the two by 16 by 12 and we're just gonna put this right in the middle. Again, don't have it sitting inside of your walls. We're gonna wanna nudge it to where it's like that. So that way we can go on the outside here and finish off the corners of the exterior. To make this look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, like a real semi, we're gonna create some skirting. Now you can use any one of these um, support pieces, but for this build, we're gonna be using the beachy beams. Now we're gonna take a number three piece here. This is the one by eight by 12. And we're gonna snap this thing in just like I'm showing you. Now you don't want it touching the wheels. We're actually gonna nudge it over two spaces and then we're gonna place one down just like that. Now I do have it nudged inward one space. Now we're gonna put a second one there and then move into this one by 16 by two to finish this part off. And now after you place this down, you're just gonna complete another row of these to have that skirting come down just a bit. And the reason for this is just to close that gap between the ground and the actual base of the vehicle. Okay. 
Next, we're gonna create the step that's gonna allow us to get into the cabin. So if we plan on using that, this is gonna help us get in there. And we're gonna start with a 16 by two by one thin floor piece. And we're gonna snap this in as close to the bottom of this skirting as we can. Now, once we have one of those in, we're actually going to move over to a smaller thin floor piece. In this case, it's gonna be a six by two by one to complete that. Now, just take this skirting design and do it on the other end of the truck as well. Now it's time to make our way back up top where we're gonna finish off the cabin roof. Now for this particular part, the way we're gonna do this is just like we did the rear cargo section. So we're gonna grab a wide floor two. Now this is gonna be the 16 by 16 by one. We're just gonna snap it right in the middle there. And then for this next part, we're gonna do the same thing by just using a combination of thin floor pieces. In this case, I'm using 16 by two by ones. And then we can use a 12 by two by one and eight by two by one thin floor to finish off the other ends of this roof. Now, as you can see, this box doesn't look that great. We're gonna create a little bit of like a graduating arc on top so that way it's gonna look a lot better. So we're gonna jump back up on top here. We're gonna use the thin floor pieces to start building this part out. Now this pattern I'm gonna show you here is what I found looks best, but you can mess around with this. So we're gonna use the 12 by two by one and eight by two by one pieces. Now we're gonna slow things down here. The pattern I went with was for the back section. I have three of them stacked high and three of them in length so you can see that there and then i went two high two wide then i did one high three wide and then i just left the remaining part of it open this next part for this windshield detail is going to require the beachy boulevard set so if you don't have that feel free to skip over this part but i took these beachy brackets and I just basically placed these in the corners here to give it a little bit more of like a finished look on the front since that was wide open. And then I used this exact same bracket part to create what looks like kind of the mirrors for this thing. So although there's no mirrors on it, it does give it a little bit of extra detail. And I highly recommend if you have these parts by putting them on, all you need to do is line it up with the bottom of the blue section and then just nudge it up five spaces and place it down. Now the last part of this build without putting any of the mechanical stuff in is going to be creating our overhead light bar. Now what we're gonna do is add some beachy thin floors to the front of this here. We're gonna use the two by 12 by one and eight by two by one, and then just place those down. And that's gonna be where we're gonna mount these lights up. So at this point, now all you need to do is go back to your toy section under vehicle parts and make your way all the way to the bottom and grab this angled light bar. Now we're going to nudge it over two spaces and we're gonna start to place these down all the way until we reach the end but again don't put it all the way to the end we're going to leave two spaces open now what i chose to do was actually knock out the center two lights to create a little bit of a gap i like the look of this better but if you like the uh complete solid bar then just leave that the way it was If you want to turn this into a functional vehicle so we can knock the door off here all we need to do is go over to our building parts and we're going to grab the wood foundation and we're going to start to stack a few of these up just like this and then we're going to drop one behind here so we can get up there and a couple around the outside here to make a little step up put more right here and now we're gonna move over to our vehicle parts and we're gonna grab a large driver's seat. And we're gonna snap this thing right on the center here as close to the windshield as possible. So now when you sit in this thing, you can actually see it from outside like this. So that, look how cool that looks. One thing to note, I have had like problems getting stuck jumping out of this driver's seat and it's been a problem in other vehicles for me as well. So I don't know if that's happening to you. So just be mindful of that. Now, the last couple of things that we're gonna wanna do to get this thing to drive is we're gonna wanna put in some thrusters in the back here. 
Now this thing is an extremely heavy vehicle and like I said before, this is not really intended to be driven uh, around the map because the map has a lot of hilly terrain, there's a lot of tight pinch points with trees, but we're gonna give this a go. We're gonna put six large thrusters on the inside here. We could probably even do more. And then you're gonna grab the large power center and we're gonna just drop it in the back corner here. Now, the other thing to note is that you're gonna wanna check your powered wheels and make sure they're not going the wrong direction. So in this case, this thing's going backwards. We do not want that. So we're gonna change the direction on that. We're gonna do the same with this one. Looks like all of the ones on the right side of the vehicle are headed in the wrong direction, including the turning wheel, which is not good. So we're gonna wanna move that one as well. Now, these ones on the opposite side appear to be doing or going the right direction. So check those out before you start to try to drive this thing. And now we should be able to move forward. Now we're gonna add a few more thrusters here in just a moment, but before we get that going, we're gonna make sure that it at least drives in the forward direction. So the last thing for thrusters that we need to do for turning assistance is get these things, large thrusters placed on the right and left sides underneath here. And now the other thing I did too was I weaseled some in right inside the front end of this thing. You can see two of them right there. You can simply do this by going over to your thruster menu. And this one is a little bit tricky, but you're gonna grab the large thrusters and you're gonna have to just mess around with getting those angles on before you actually uh, can get that in there. But once you find the right angle, you can place them. Now that's a little overkill under there. You can try that if you want, but these two I found to work just fine by themselves. Now the interior thrusters we put on should be tuned to channel three, but what we're gonna wanna do is come down here and use our wrench tool and make sure we turn these off of channel three. And we're gonna put the left ones on channel one and then close that down. And then we're gonna get to these other ones here. We're gonna turn channel one on and channel three off. And then for the right side ones, we're gonna tune those to channel two. Just make sure that channel one and channel three are off on both of those. This is going to allow us to independently choose which thrusters we're turning on when using the different channels while we're in the driver's seat. Another thing that's helpful is you can come up to the front here and we can place some small balloons on the top. And this is going to give it a little bit less trouble when climbing things like hills or running into objects that are gonna get in its way. What we can do to assist our driving abilities in this thing is go on the interior of this back cargo area and we're gonna place down some balloons and this is going to give it a little bit of relief off of the ground as you're driving. You can even go as far as moving around into the front cab area and just drop down a couple of small balloons on the right and left side just like this. Now this is gonna give you a little bit of relief when it comes to driving the vehicle. Now let's hop in the driver's seat after all this work and see how this thing handles. You might be surprised. Let's see what we got going on here. So first things first, absolutely obliterated the granite that was on the ground here. Now we're gonna give it a little bit of a hill test. There was a lot of speculation out there when I posted this, can it climb hills? Now. It's very sluggish up hills, but I'm demonstrating to you right now, it can absolutely climb hills. Anything that gets in its way with the exception of like certain structures and just getting hung up on stuff because it's so large, it can handle. I even took this thing through water and it's a lot more sluggish, but it just blasted through the granite. It got through the water. I was actually completely blown away. Now, even the trees and everything in its way was getting completely demolished and nothing was breaking until a certain point. I did end up having that front end come off, but I repaired it. It was just a lot of fun overall. So here are some clips too of some additional testing. Now again, the granite has no chance against this vehicle. I'm continuing to mow down trees. I'm going through some very rough terrain. Now again, this is a very sluggish vehicle. I am definitely not recommending building this to be your all around vehicle in the game, but you can definitely drive it and it is functional. I did get to a point too where I had to reverse and the reverse actually works very well. So that's an option for you as well. And considering the weight of this thing, I think the design is very well. It actually gets up to speeds just as fast as any of the pre-builds that are out there. So I'm really impressed with this build. And also take a look at how awesome your character looks 
in the front end of this thing. Awesome. Now, if you pay attention to the meter marker off to the left side of the screen, I've gotten to about 600, 700 meters before I ran into an issue. And what that was is I ended up making my way over to the frost lands ahead here. And unfortunately, once you hit frost pine, this thing is not going to break through that. And I don't really know if there's any vehicles in the game that can actually handle that anyways. And then the last thing I did to have some more fun was I just stacked a ton of balloons up on this thing. Now, definitely don't be doing this with this vehicle, but it does turn right and left and you can actually move forward in the air. So if you want to get experimental in sandbox, feel free to do that. I'm actually only going to be building this in my survival world on my island as a set piece and I'm going to use it as storage. It's just going to be a very cool looking piece to show off to all the people that jump into my survival world. So that's kind of, again, the use case in my opinion, but feel free to try to drive this thing around and experiment with it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you smash that like button and be subscribed with notifications on so you never miss a video of mine. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next one.